all right welcome back so as you can see after your first two operations uh, all the toolpath are really all over the place and i can't quite see my part very well now all you have to do is make sure that both toolpath are selected okay by either selecting both of them and making sure that there's a green check mark on both of them or selecting the toolpath group hold shift and hit t what that does is that will actually clear out all the toolpath for you now it didn't work for me let me go ahead and try that again make sure that i have one two i'm gonna hold shift select both of them and select uh, hit t and it will make the toolpath disappear all right so just make sure they're both selected hold shift and hit t that will make your toolpath disappear and if you make them appear again all you have to do is do the same thing by hitting t again holding shift and hitting t again and they will disappear all right so uh, let's go ahead and create our first machining operation in the five axis using the blade expert so come over here under toolpath multi-axis and come over here under custom apps so under custom apps you're going to see something called a port expert and a blade expert both of these are add-ons to mastercam if you have not ordered that part of your package they will not be here or you will not be able to use them those are add-ons to mastercam they are not part of the milling or lathe or multi-access uh, packages they are their own separate package as blade expert and port expert okay so go ahead and select blade expert and go to tool so for the tool we're going to select a quarter of an inch flat end mill so come over here under select tool library and quarter of an inch flat end mill if you haven't selected that and select ok so under the comment over here we're going to call that blade expert rough all right so now that you have that done let's go to the holder and we're going to keep the holder the same and go to cut parameters so first and foremost let's go through this the pattern we're going to be machining a roughing operation we're actually going to be using each of those four so in the next three videos we're going to be doing a blade finish hub finish as well as a fillet finish in this one we're going to create a roughing operation now there's a strategy offset from hub and you can see a graphical interface of how that looks like so you can offset from the hub all the way to the next basically splitter or the next hub you can also do offset from shroud okay uh, so from the shroud basically outwards towards the hub and then also morph in between the shroud and the hub we're going to keep everything as offset from hub the sorting method you can do one way starting from leading edge one way from the trailing edge so either starting from top or to the bottom you can do zigzag starting from here basically with zigzag back and forth and you can also do zigzag the opposite starting here goes back and forth we're going to keep it the first option so ordering left to right you can also do it right to left or you can do it from the center on but the best way to do it just keep it this default we're really not going to change anything over here except a few things a few small things but most of these features what's really nice is MeshroCam already detects and knows what are the nice features what are the generic uh, features to use and we'll keep them that way and you pretty much want to keep it uh, that way unless you're doing something where you have some very odd shapes that you're trying to get an angle on or trying to get do some uh, very odd things on that's when you start changing some of these features so for the depth step we're going to keep it as the maximum distance of depth is 0 0.05 50 thou and maximum step over as 50 thou okay so the first cut we're going to leave inter intermediate slices at zero we're not going to do any cuts in between cuts that's what that really means and you can also identify the first cut feed rate as well but we're going to keep that as off the rest material we're going to we're not going to do anything with that we're going to leave it as roughing all depth okay we're not going to basically we're not machining rest over or leftover of any blade expert material that we've already done so leave it leave it just like that is and let's go to the part definition so this is where you do most of your work so under part definition this is where you select the blade splitters and the fillets all in one all right so we're going to select this arrow and basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to select an entire slice a slice again is a shroud splitter and a shroud so we're going to select all three of these so let's go ahead and get started now if you just select something you're going to notice that everything is selected so come over here and unselect everything and you want to make sure that activate solid selection is selected and faces are selected make sure that body is not selected this allows you to select the faces and that's what you want to do so you want to go around 
and basically select all the faces of your part all the way around of both shrouds on each left and right as well as this splitter that's in the middle. Make sure that you don't miss anything. And I'll show you how to verify that you didn't miss anything after you're done. All right, so I look like I very much got everything of those. So those two shrouds and a splitter is considered one slice. Go ahead and hit enter. And here it will ask you to select faces. That's okay, go ahead and hit enter again. And go ahead and select show. So show shows you all the faces that you've selected and just make sure that three pieces are selected two shrouds and a splitter just like i have over here and make sure 19 surfaces are selected select ok and then select done so that's for the blades and splitters you always choose all of these at the same time fillets are the radiuses around the splitters or the shrouds okay so for the hub go ahead and select hub and again you want to make sure to activate solid selection Make sure only faces and this is going to be your hub okay so go ahead and select okay if you want to show it go ahead and select show this will make sure everything disappears and only whatever you selected is there and that looks good go ahead and select okay and select done so now that you have that done this is how much material you want to leave uh, in both the hub and the blade we're going to leave that the same you can actually uh, tell it to leave some material if you like but we're going to leave it the same as it is all right for check surfaces this will if you want to check certain surfaces so you make sure that your tool is not jamming onto that surfaces now you don't really need to do that again unless you have some complex stuff so i'll show you guys in a later exercise when we actually need to use that all right so rotation axis let master cam automatically uh, detect that otherwise you're going to have to define it and the rotary axis will be the center of your part obviously so that's going to be that number of segments we're only going to be machining one segment and then we're going to be transforming that after we're done with all of our blade expert machining operation we're going to transform that five times okay to basically machine all the way around so we're only focusing on one stock let it auto detect the stock because we've already created it here Mastercam will automatically detect what is what the stock is and what's left over stock offset we're not going to leave any stock we're going to be machining as much as we want so you can leave it there since this is a roughing operation it wouldn't be a bad idea to leave some stock in all of these but you can leave it as zero anyways because we're gonna there's some areas that we are not going to be able to reach so we're going to have to come back here and machine them anyways machine determine number uh, we're only going to be machining one okay one segment starting in one so remember this is one slice determine number just one not all and start angle is at the first one okay so we can leave it at, at, at segment one okay direction we can leave it at clockwise and sorting by is completed segment so this is for the quality depending on how smooth how nice the surface finish you want this is where you can edit that we can leave it at two thou over here and we can leave it at 20 percent both for the splitter flow line smoothing and tool access to the smoothing now you're welcome to after you're done with your creating your operation to play around with these and see what kind of finish it gets you depending if you want to create a better finish okay you can also identify a maximum distance but that would make it a very bad surface finish i'm going to leave that as off so this is the main part that you actually work the most in if you go to tool access control you can also control the tilting of the tool to avoid it hitting certain parts you can play around with that only if you have collision and there are also you can set limits okay the machine limits depending on what kind of angle you want it to uh, go in and move out from so again only if you have collisions is when you worry about that you can also identify a clearance type as cylindrical or conical we're going to keep it as cylindrical and we're going to keep all of these the same but you can see all that orange area is how you change uh, the size of the shaft arbor and holder so obviously every time you click on one it shows you in the graphical area what is highlighted and what you're changing let's go to Lincoln parameters also make sure that you have automatic in both uh, Lincoln between cuts and uh, lead in and lead out let master cam identify that the only time again you would want to make sure to change these is if you come over here and you're trying to and, and you machine it and you have collisions or you have some issues to the point where you actually need to do that master cam is very smart it will know how to identify your uh, linking link between cuts and between slices automatically for the clearance now on default it would be a sphere okay but 
for us it was a cylinder remember we created a cylinder but because we've created two machining operations prior okay you can actually leave it as a sphere because it's basically only has that spherical uh, left over you don't have you don't have the cylinder left over you don't have all that material that you want to make sure to get rid of just make sure that it is on sphere and remains there distance there's an entry distance and an exit feed as well of a distance you can leave those uh some uh, the same as here and also the home position you leave it the same everything will work out just fine the way it is in most cases okay let's go to the edge now edge uh, rolling you can leave it automatic but you can actually change it to full without trimming you can do it trim by tool radius all right you can basically only trimming the radius of the tool using that you can uh, also trim by the length of the tool or by the angle we're going to leave it as automatic just let metricam detect everything automatically again unless you have issues now the edge extension this is where it's very important i'm actually going to change this to 0.5 and change this to 0.25 so basically what we're doing is we're changing the leading edge which is right here extending that by 0.5 and the tangential right here to the bottom by 0.25 i already know that that's what's going to work you might have to test that out depending on how long the area is from your shroud to the edge of your part so basically from here to here i know that it's a little bit less than half an inch so i need to create it a half an inch to clear out my part and here i just want to make sure that my part goes past this about a quarter of an inch to make sure my part is machined so after you're done come down here all the way to the bottom all right if you can't see it i'm going to move it up a little bit select apply and okay all right and just let master cam generate the dirty toolpath i'm going to pause the video and unpause it as soon as my toolpath generation is done okay so basically if you get this message not all layers could be machined that is okay all right so go ahead and select okay and i'm going to zoom in real quick just to show you what those layers mean by that or what do we mean by those layers now you're going to notice that there's steps in between each of these so this is one two three all of these are layers the main reason why it says not all layers can be machined is if i zoom into another shroud that distance in between here for example the tool is not going to be able to fit very nicely in between that so that's okay that is okay completely okay that it says that it's not an error it's just saying that it could not get to all the depth that it's necessary to get to okay but one thing we notice is that the toolpath and how big it is i mean the biggest toolpath we had so far is 58 100 kilobytes this one is 10,000. so let me go ahead and change that a little bit so go ahead and go to parameters and since i'm not finishing the step down the depth step i can change that to 0.1 and what will that will do is will actually increase um or basically decrease it by half the toolpath size and the reason why i want to do that just for now it'll, it will not give me a smooth finish but it will decrease it so i'm going to select apply and regenerate that and again the reason for that is because i'm going to come over and uh, translate that operation five more times around my blade that's going to become a huge file later on so the bigger this is the bigger the file is so i want to make sure to make these all as small as possible again we get the warning come up select ok and make sure that the machining operations are all taking place in between those two shrouds okay and that looks everything looks good over here so let's go ahead and see how that looks so go ahead and select all the toolpath and select verify selected operations all right, so what we're going to do real quick is we're going to forward through the first two operations. So this is the first operation. All right, so first operation, roughing. So then there's our second operation, finishing operation in three axis. And I will go ahead and play out that last operation. All right, so you can see the first, the tool comes in at an angle right away. And go ahead and select play and you can see that the tool is machining it starts to machine a little bit over the part and then it starts to machine and dig into the area that's not being machined and that's the whole part point of the part now because we didn't tell it to leave any material it's probably not going to leave much material around your part okay so as you can see it machined all as much as it can but it's still left over material and it's because we're going to leave this area right here that's part of the hub to be finished during the hub and we're also going to leave the radius to be finished during the fillet finishing and also we're going to leave the blade finishing on its own as well now as you can see there's not much left over on the blade 
but there's still enough left over to create a finishing operation for that. Now, as you can see, we're done with that. So we're going to close this out in the next video. We'll start creating one of the three finishing operation for the blade. All right. For the fillets and for the hub. So next three videos will be three finishing operations.